So I just want to stress the importance of learning your students' names. Usually, you only learn your students' names who are really bad. So you can be like, hey, Jordan, stop playing video games on your cell phone. Or, good job, Maria. Thanks for answering that question again. So usually, there's like three people you know the names of. But knowing everyone's names really makes them feel like they're part of the class and makes them feel like they can't hide in the back quietly. Something that comes up a lot and that I kind of heard from circulating around is the not knowing the answer to a question when a student asks the question. Um, my solution to that is bringing a laptop with me, especially in labs where students are doing other things. They come up to you with a question, you're like, ooh, I do not know the word for that, or I don't know the answer to whatever concept you're talking about. So I Google it. And I'll just sit right there in front of them. Students don't care at all. Students are really forgiving. And you can mess up, and you can not know the answer. As long as you get them the answer, or tell them that's a really interesting question and get back to them, you don't need to know everything. Um, I'm a pretty laid back teacher, but when it comes to consequences, being really strict on consequences helps. A lot of GSIs want to be friends with their students just because they're your age. You know what they're going through. But it makes teaching a lot difficult, a lot more difficult, especially when they come to you and they're like, if I don't get a B minus in this class, I'm going to get kicked out of the whole class. I'm going to get kicked out of school. I'm on academic probation. That's the end of my life. If you're friends with them, it's really hard to be like, sorry, you're still getting a C. That actually happened to me last semester. It's really sad, but... <laughs> yes? Should the bar be like, I am trying to help these people become potential grad students, or is it I should figure out what the least of them is capable of and then set the bar there? Or like, I, it's probably gonna differ from class to class, but I don't know how much from the top down is really gonna come. So like, like when you're talking about, you seem to imply there's a lot of latitude, at least in some of these sections. I mean, should it really be like, struggle through one paper and I'll pat you on the back? Or is it like, you should be able to read five in the course of two months and then synthesize them meaningfully? Like, like That's a good question, and that's an individual decision. You have to think about what you want your students to get out of your section. And if you think about that, you're way ahead of most GSIs. Because I think most GSIs just are like, this is going to pay for my tuition. Just barrel through it. But if you think, what do I want my students to get out of this? When I go in, I want my students to learn how to read scientific journal articles, because I didn't learn that until I had already graduated undergrad. Um, I want them to learn how to write. I want them to learn how to think critically. So everyone has different goals. And you just have to think about what teaching means to you and what you want your students to get out of it. And then that'll really dictate how you run your sections.